Okay, today I want to do a video on elastic based roll centers. I mention it a lot, but I don't think I've ever done anything about defining them and how they work and how they migrate. So let's roll the intro and we'll talk about some elastic based roll centers. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars building race cars and racing cars and I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. An elastic base roll center is basically something that goes through the springs and the roll center migrates towards a stiffer spring. If you have a spring split of say a 250 on the left rear and a 200 on the right rear, the roll center will actually migrate towards the left rear. I do think there's something to having a roll center elastically that lines up or is comparable to the kinematic roll center. I don't think it's mandatory. If everything is equidistant in your car and you have the same springs on both sides, let's say in the rear you have a pair of 200s, the 200s, the angle of them, and the actual wheel rates or spring rates that are felt at the wheel is probably the most important. With a paired up and squared up suspension, your roll center will be in the middle between the two springs. Now what you have to remember is not everything is always equal in the back. You know, the springs are at different angles, so it should give you a different wheel rate. We're basically talking about spring rate at the wheel. It's not always just a pair of 200 springs, although in the examples here I'll show you, that's what I kind of do because it's the easiest way to see that. But you got to keep in mind that it's actually a wheel rate, which encompasses a bunch of things. Now we run a four link rear suspension and there's spring indexing. Our bird cages will index into the springs or out of the springs and the wheel rates are always different and they are changing. In the left rear we know as we drop that spring will index and depending on the rod angles will index at different rates. So your actual spring rate in the rear on each corner is actually changing and moving around with the actual spring. So don't take into the account the fact that you are running just equal springs in the rear. There's a lot more going on with that than just the spring spring rates themselves. Like I said, it's more about wheel rate. Now wheel rate is, I don't know if you're real familiar with that, but wheel rate is measured from what the type, center of the tire contact patch feels is the spring rate in the rear. Like I said, Spring rate angles make a big difference. The more angle is on it, the softer the spring rate. And then how the body and chassis rolls onto that spring. If you have your spring in front on the right rear, as your car compresses, depending on the rod angle, most rod angles, the spring will see more indexing into that spring. 
Same with the spring behind on the left rear. For Link, originally, it was a spring ahead on the left rear. And then a guy named Skip Arp, if you guys are old timers, you guys remember Skip. He went to Florida one year, and I think he might have run that at the end of one year, but he went to Florida one year with that spring behind the left rear on a GRT and just wiped him out. And that started the movement. Everybody started going to that spring behind setup. And at first with that spring behind setup, a lot of people struggled because they couldn't get their car free enough. They were running bigger right front springs and they couldn't get the car to roll and release the wedge. And what would actually happen a lot of times is for like a muddy situation, we'd have a spring and shock. Usually it's the same spring. We figured out chassis mounts and it was pretty cool. But we'd actually take that same spring and just put it behind the rear end and we'd run it like that. But we'd start out the night in a heavy situation with the spring in front of the rear end because we were struggling getting the car freed up. Once we figured out freeing the car up and the cars got a lot better and the front ends got a lot better, we just put the spring on the rear end in behind and that was just the craze. Now we're so far into it, it's considered a stock thing that we run the spring behind on the left rear and the spring ahead on the right rear. Also clamping the springs. We used to run a setup on the late models and the modifieds that was a clamp and what would happen is on the left rear mainly we ran it some on the right rear behind we ran two springs we did a lot of experimenting that's why i'm really not hip on these rules now where you gotta run this you gotta run that because we did so much experimenting and everybody moved around and ran different things it, it was a really fun time to be involved with late model racing but a clamp deal is basically when you put your left rear spring in front of the rear end and you put it on the axle housing, it was clamped to the axle housing. So when you got on the gas and that torque arm would come up, that would index into that spring and you'd get like a ton of left rear traction off that. There is a relationship by having your elastic based roll center and your kinematic roll center line up or get very close together. I think it frees the car up and lets it more naturally roll on and off the springs through the suspension. It'll just, I think there's a bind there if you get those two things fighting each other too hard. As you know in the rear, the J-bar does put a kinematic roll center in there, but I think it's actually more important with the jacking effect and how the center of gravity acts on that jacking effect of that J-bar than there is actually like a roll center you'd think about in the front. It's a little different, similar, but it. I think we have to think about that in a different way. So let's go to the drawing board and I'll show you some diagrams. I have it kind of mapped out on how I'm going to do this. I'll show you some diagrams on how this thing is set up and how it actually moves and migrates. Okay, let's look at these slides as kind of an example. This first slide is our setup. Basically, we have equal springs, let's say a pair of 200s or whatever, 
on both sides of the car and you'd have the center line of the car and both springs are equal from the center line of the car. Just a basic setup to illustrate my point. In this next slide, let's say we have equal springs and we roll the car. If you roll the car, that means that the left is going to extend the same as the right is going to compress. Equal springs still have our same, let's say, 200 on each side. Now, let's say the right side spring is stiffer than the left. Let's say we put a 250 on the right rear and a 175 or a 150 on the left rear. That would technically, when the car rolls, extend the left more than it would compress the right and move the and move the elastic roll center towards the right of the car. Everything would shift. If you can almost picture it, you can picture it moving the roll center to the right, and you can actually picture that car roll more on the left and less on the right. Now let's look at this last slide. Let's say the left spring is stiffer than the right rear spring. Let's say you have a 250 on the left and you have a 200 on the right. That would mean it would move the elastic roll center towards the left side of the car. It would pivot off that roll center. The right would get smashed. Let's say you have um, an extension of an inch and a half on the left side, but you have three inches of compression on the right. The roll center would move left, and the right is compressed more than the left is extended. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. You can even accept notifications too. And it's not nothing spammy notifications. What it actually does is next time you log into YouTube, it'll say that I have a video up and it'll suggest that you go watch it. That's all it is. So subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next video.